Hello friends, how's it going? Today we've got Brian from Santiment back at it. We're gonna be talking about the crypto markets which haven't been looking so hot lately. Uh, I mean, at the point we are right now, I think Bitcoin's hanging on by a thread at the $60,000 mark, uh, but markets are down across the board. So we're gonna talk about why that might be. We'll look at sentiment across the market, some of the drivers for this price action, and then we'll, we'll predict to the best of our abilities with the data what might happen next so that you can uh, add that into your plan. And again, as always, if you do want to get access to these data tools, you can find a link to Santamon in the description below. And there is a coupon code Hishoshi in there as well. Uh, so Brian, take us away. Let's talk markets. Absolutely. It's been a wild ride, uh, especially this week as we reached the 60K psychological support level that many traders have had their eyes on for the first time since April 18th. Uh, it, it feels like a lot longer, but yeah, we just had that quick nosedive, <coughs> excuse me, back on uh, the 18th that spooked a lot of people, and then there was a quick recovery that time. I think in this case, it's been a little more of a gradual slide down, which is concerning because it doesn't, it doesn't feel as much like a flash crash this time that would imply a quick rebound. Um, and a lot of our social data is confirming that the crowd is a bit more spooked this second time around compared to the one two weeks ago. Yeah, and then looking at just social media from everyone's account might be looking slightly differently, you know, algorithms and such. But right now I'm seeing almost consensus that this is not good. Now, there are still quite a few people who I see on there especially the influencer types are saying, hey, listen, we're still in a bull market. This is a normal retraction. I think we can talk through that here and see what the data says about whether there's real reason to be concerned about the mid to long term trend or if this is just a one of those classic 40, 50 percent drops for altcoins in the midst of a bull market. Yeah, totally. And, you know, we have to always acknowledge the fact that there is a pretty big correlation right now between crypto and the S&P. And I just pulled up this mm -hmm. chart that shows here in green, this is Bitcoin's price. Here in teal, this is uh, the S&P 500. They're obviously on different axes, but you can see the relation between them with Bitcoin, of course, being the more volatile of the two. Um, and both have been dropping pretty dramatically today in particular um, on some new inflation concerns that have popped up in the U.S. Um, whatever country you may be watching this from, you've probably it kind of acknowledged that the way the Fed is and the way the uh, inflationary policies have been here in the U.S. at least the last few years have had just a massive uh, kind of impact on the rest of the markets. So until that changes, we have to be conscious of the fact that the way this, the U.S. stock market has been going lately has had an impact on the way crypto goes. And it might be uh, emphasizing a greater drop than crypto otherwise would be seeing on its own if the S&P was stable right now. So that, that could actually be a positive argument uh, indicating that if the S&P starts to recover, then crypto might see a, a bit of a, a relief rebound of its own. Do you do you ever uh, apply to this particular chart? Now, I agree with the S&P correlation. I know there's also gold listed here yeah. on the, the correlation chart. Do you ever do this with the dollar as well, as in where the correlation is between this and the U.S. dollar? Yeah, I'm hoping we actually get dollar data on our uh, charts soon. We don't currently have them, so usually I'll just open up Yahoo, um, you know, stocks and, and kind of see that way how crypto versus the dollar are going. And there is a pretty inverse correlation between the two. As the dollar rises, crypto tends to struggle. Right. Obviously, crypto is perceived as the anti-fiat, so it only makes sense. And the ratio of you know, what makes Bitcoin worth 60K or so right now, it's literally Bitcoin as the numerator, USD as the dollar. So if the dollar goes up, that should theoretically have an impact on Bitcoin's value being less. Um, mm. so yeah, there, there's an obvious correlation that's kind of always existed. And I think 2022 was the most recent, uh, time period where we saw the dollar's value, uh, spiking. I think it got to like 114 or so at one point, maybe a little higher. 
um, and that was in having a dramatic impact on Bitcoin's price falling off a cliff and eventually getting into the 15 Ks as FTX mm -hmm. collapsed in November of that year. Yeah, very interesting stuff. So obviously sentiment in the macro markets and tr traditional financial markets matter here. And there's lots of concerning things on the macroeconomic trends. I feel like sentiment wise, people had priced in almost a guarantee of rate hikes and quantitative easing and all the things that led to the 2021 right. bull, run, bull run fervor. And now we're kind of saying that might not happen this year, might not happen in the following year. We're not sure yet. Um, yeah. yeah, it's interesting stuff. The indication was, at least at the beginning of the year, that the rate hikes may be done and people were actually leaning toward uh, the higher probability outcome of, of rate rates being reduced again, which would be yeah, great cuts. for, yeah. And uh, so far, neither has occurred. It's just been kind of a hands-off um, type of policy from the Fed so far. And I'm curious to see whether that's going to change in our next uh, big FOMC announcement in May. Um, so that'll have a, a pretty dramatic impact, whatever they end up deciding. Gotcha. That makes sense. So then also on maybe like from a socials perspective or from an on-chain perspective, even what are things, what are things looking like right now? Probably, I mean, yeah. obviously negative price action, but what are other data points that we can look at that might tell us a, a sure. bigger story? Yeah. On the price end, you can see the sea of red, no surprise there, Bitcoin down 4.3% and most assets down more than that. Uh, but Bitcoin social volume here has jumped up dramatically today. Um, up 25% compared to the previous day. If you look at the previous week, though, Bitcoin is actually being talked about less and less. And this is kind of a reflection of all assets. Ethereum had a, a bit of a jump because of the ETF discussions that have been going on and the will they or won't they news going on about whether the SEC approves the first Ethereum spot ETF. But the big story here is Bitcoin being talked about less and less. And that goes all the way back to the past 30 days. This is a measurement of 30 day social volume compared to the previous 30 days. And it's just with a few exceptions, as always, just less and less discussion across the board about mm -hmm. assets. And that's kind of a an indication that there is more and more of a bearish sentiment going on and people believing that that, you know, March 14th all time high was was the big moment and there won't be another one for quite some time so everyone's kind of just jumping off the bandwagon now yeah and, and you know you obviously historical data only tells you so much because we're in a very different space than we were two three years ago but at the same time thinking back to just anecdotally my experience in previous bull market setups is there are a couple of these deflation like deflating moments uh and spans in the market where people think it's over let's roll it up and see you in a couple of years and then things come springing back to life yep it's just cooling off uh curious to get your thoughts on that you know maybe from the lens of the data and what you what you've been looking at over the last few days yeah totally i, I mean you nailed it there are so many cycles throughout bitcoin's history where you see euphoria like we did throughout January, February, and March, and then things cool down dramatically uh, on the sentiment side after prices drop where they go flat for a while. And all these FOMOers who came in over here in mid-March, they're like, oh, this isn't what I signed up for. Why are prices going down? I'm not interested in crypto anymore. And then there comes a relief rally to kind of bait them back in and start FOMOing in and then the top happens and rinse and repeat. Um, I'll open up a chart here. I want to show you exactly what our social volume for Bitcoin looks like over time and how uh, sentiment comes into play on that. So we can measure we can measure both uh, the social volume of Bitcoin as well as the positive versus negative score ratio, kind of like a fear and greed index, which many of you may be familiar with. Uh, so this is social volume. You can see how actually about two weeks before the all time high, this was when euphoria was peaking and there was just tons and tons of discussion. We got a little more of a leg up 
and then boom, we start to have this dramatic drop. Um, and then weighted sentiment. So this is measuring the actual amount of social volume related to Bitcoin. And it's multiplied by the amount of comments that are positive versus negative. So long story short, when you see these really high bars, that's a sign of euphoria and markets typically correct when people are FOMOing in and saying they're about to get their new Lambo and XYZ asset is about to go to the moon. And then vice versa, when things are super negative, that tends to be when markets rise. This was a good example here in late November and then people got euphoric after the bounce happened and then we see a retrace and a few weeks of negativity. Um, it's been a bit more unpredictable, right? We had from mid-March all the way until mid-April, five straight weeks where we were seeing more bearishness than usual based on the historical decade plus amount of data that we have. During that time, it was kind of chopping back and forth. We revisited 70K a little bit, ends up falling. And then as we rebound here, we see the first big euphoria spike. This was last week as we got all the way back to, I believe, a little above 67K. And then after that euphoria spike, we dropped dramatically. And now we're back in this hugely bearish, um, FUD-ridden type of narrative that the crowd has created. And I believe that's a good thing uh, based on history. Now, of course, this is just the social end of things. And it's best if we combine it with you know how the whales are acting, what the funding rates look like, the overall activity of Bitcoin and other top cap networks that control the rest of the smaller assets. But on its own, this is a very good sign that we're starting to see a lot of panic and FUD and people actually legitimately dropping their, their coins. Um, and that's actually illustrated really well on this. This is one of my new favorite charts. This is actually the amount of wallets uh, that hold more than zero coins. So basically any non-empty mm -hmm. coin. Uh, and as it goes up, this is usually a sign that people are confident and they want to hold or buy more. And there's a, a larger and larger distribution of wallets of the given uh, finite supply of Bitcoin. And actually, ever since April 26th or so, about four days ago from the time of this recording, uh, we started to see this big flattening period. And this is a sign of small trader uh, hesitation and FUD and worry. Generally during that time, especially if it starts to go down, so like these, these small traders decide to liquidate their wallets because they're just no longer interested, that's when we see these huge rises. Uh, it's not a perfect correlation by any means, but we actually want to see the amount of wallets that have coins in them stop growing and start to decline because that's a sign of FUD. Um, and this line is almost exclusively controlled by the small wallets. The amount of whale wallets out there make up less than 0.01% of these wallets. So it's gonna be the you know, tiny 0.01 BTC wallets that are really driving this line up and down. So with this rising, this rising incline thereabouts in you know, the April timeframe, does yep. that signal to you not sizable necessarily, but accumulation from what we would deem maybe retail ish users. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the small traders who decided, uh, that this, this dip here, especially right here in, in mid April, two, three weeks mm -hmm. ago, this was a great dip to buy according to them. And they were buying with confidence because, you know, for the past six months before it, we were just seeing up, up, up rising all around. So they were kind of defying what the price trend was doing and saying, I'm going to buy with confidence here because I think it's just going to go back to 70 K and maybe break this all time high here. Uh, and they ended up being wrong, right? We saw a small relief bounce, but now all these people who were buying here, they're getting punished by us reaching the lowest level right now in a couple of weeks, but probably it, it looks like it's going to go to the lowest level since late February right now. All right. So then juxtaposing this then against whale activity is probably a useful way to look at this, right? Yeah, totally. So if we go up to one of my go-to charts here that I share on our own live streams, uh, we're seeing here a few different lines. This bright green line is the percentage of supply 
that's held by sharks and whales, which we deem 10 to 10K BTC wallets. There's obviously some exchanges in here and some nullified information, but this is kind of the meat, meat and potatoes uh, tier of traders that tend to control where prices go next. And they have a pretty good uh, correlation with prices moving up when they accumulate and going down when they dump. And we saw some accumulation, especially uh, beginning in late January up until late March. And during this time, of course, we had an all-time high. So about 10 days after that all-time high, they suddenly started to dump. And this dark green line actually shows the amount of Bitcoin held, regardless of the percentage of supply. And from, let's just go from February 4th up until we we'll say April, 4, April 3rd, this two month stretch, they accumulated 217,000 BTC, which is enormous, tens of billions of dollars. After that, I think that actually might be hundreds of billions of dollars actually, but after that, they've actually dropped about 34K of that. So still, I mean, the long-term trend mm -hmm. looks pretty nice here, but at least since the beginning of the month, these last four-ish weeks or so, we're, we're looking at the whales and sharks actually taking some profit and the prices seemingly following them. Uh, and until they start to turn it around and resume their accumulation, there can be an argument that we'll continue to slide very slowly uh, until either the crowd gets really, really fearful, like the way late November 2022 was with the FTX collapse, or the whales just decide, you know what, prices are low enough, I'm going to start pumping those prices again and feel like 58k or 56k is a good uh, price for me to get in uh, and, and start to accumulate some wealth again. Makes sense. Yeah, it's interesting to watch to watch these. It's it's looking at where whales accumulate versus where the you know the smaller trader, the, even the you know the individual is accumulating. You can kind of see exactly see the difference between the two. Yeah, and a great the reason I have these red and blue lines here too is they're the the lines representing shark and whale uh, stablecoin holdings and a mm -hmm. good predecessor that may be hinting that they're going to start accumulating again would be fiat coming in from outside sources to start indicating that they're they're collecting a lot more tether and USD coin once again. If they collect that, then that leads to more Bitcoin accumulation with those stable coins. So right now, both are somewhat low. I mean, stable coins especially, they've been dropping pretty dramatically indicating that, you know, even during this accumulation, the stable coins were being swapped for Bitcoin during that big run that eventually got us to an all time high. I'd like to see these stable coins start to jump up again. Right. Dry powder for them to buy. Exactly. Yeah. How much how much do you think the the prevalence for Bitcoin specifically, obviously, but the prevalence of purchasing through instruments like the ETF now also an ETF in I think it was Hong Kong. Um, do you think that that changes that pattern a little bit where you can buy not you can buy indirectly in a sense not using usdt or usdc mm -hmm. yeah I, absolutely i mean it is a, a new world ever since the the etfs were approved in uh what was it january 10th or 11th depending on your time zone of this year um when that happened we kind of had this new way of viewing uh on-chain metrics and in applying we have to we have to understand that there's going to be action that is impacting prices that are that that's completely away from the on-chain side of things now and uh we we try to pay attention to inflows and outflows uh, we do have a dashboard that kind of tracks volume we're still working on an inflow and outflow aspect of it that can show like the net inflow versus outflow, which is way more important than volume in my opinion. Uh, but the next time we call that might be done and I can show that off, but it's been kind of flat mm -hmm. based on what I've understood and read from some of our other um, sources in crypto that do great research on this stuff. And even though volume is maintaining like three to $4 billion per day, 
at least among the seven top seven largest ETFs for Bitcoin. It's a little concerning that it's not coming from just new dollars moving into the ETFs. It's kind of just buyers and sellers battling on a daily basis right now. Right, right. And that, that could be a result of questionable economic situation around the world right now, you know, tr trying to figure out oh, yeah. what, how to play it. Yeah, I'm also interested, you know, especially when stocks and equities kind of go through a bit of a tumultuous period like they are right now, do some of those traditional traders try to hedge their bets and put their money in crypto? Mm -hmm. And if they do, is that going to lend to crypto uh, uncorrelating with the S&P and pumping crypto up without its reliance so much? Uh, so that could be a development that we might see later this year or in 2025. Yeah, that from even just from a bit a Bitcoin perspective, I'd be curious because it will sort of validate or invalidate the thesis that large, larger, you know, institutions, but also just larger net worth individuals uh, will seek refuge in in Bitcoin as a wealth right. wealth preservation. Me uh, mechanism and I, I'm curious to see if that actually pans out now that there is a financial product they can access it through yeah same I mean all the best bull markets that we have seen going back 12-ish years or so they have occurred when there is no reliance uh, on the S&P 500 and mm -hmm. equities markets it's just Bitcoin doing its own thing right some people think it has to be inverse but that's not true either it's basically just Bitcoin doing its own thing and ignoring what's happening in the real world. That's when we see our biggest gains in Bitcoin and crypto. Got it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, this is why it's better to look at data to try and make sense of things rather than just using our imagination. Because sometimes what we think is influenced by <laughs> in, invalid, yeah. invalid data, right? Or we just have anecdotal experiences. Right. You may see five straight posts on Twitter slash X and say, oh, okay, everyone's bullish. Yeah. But when you take a look at uh, a scale of millions of comments instead, it might paint a different picture. Right, exactly. Yeah, we have a a, a bias based on our scope and algorithms feed of us course. certain stuff. Yep, this is why machines are taking over. They just do a better job than we can at... Uh, seeing the at putting the vast quantity of information into a meaningful story gotcha agreed but yeah i mean the last thing i wanted to show here is just the the overall amount of discussion going into bitcoin right now which is quite high you can see these these lines here are kind of widening a little bit as of late mm -hmm. bitcoin's price bitcoin and fiat as people talk about liquidating or bringing in new money i think it, this is more so due to people liquidating uh, and try to convert their Bitcoin to dollars because they think that the bull market is over, which actually is a bullish sign. Mm -hmm. um, the halving is being talked about less and less, makes sense. You've got random outliers like Rune being talked about a lot. Meme coins is certainly being, they're being ignored again because uh, they've been hammered as of late. Altcoins in general are just getting uh, crushed mm -hmm. for the past, well, throughout April really, um, after the party kind of ended in in late March for most meme coins and altcoins. So there's a lot of stories that you can find here. And um, as as Hishoshi mentioned at the beginning of the call, you can just get a free trial and, and enter the code Hishoshi in all caps. And you can just get uh, all of this data at your fingertips for free. Uh, enjoy it for a week. Decide if you like it and, and become a member if you'd like. Yeah, definitely something that I use pretty often, uh, especially if I the way I use it is um, I come up with a hypothesis and I come in here to try and validate or invalidate it, <laughs> you know, because then I'll, I'll usually be able to find yeah. some some examples in here that that kind of follow the, the trend I'm looking at and others that say, yeah, not so much. And then I can yeah. weigh the cases on either side. You know, a, a lot of the stuff that we're seeing now, I think, is a lot of people who had priced in just through their their speculation a lot of events that are now becoming clear either they're not happening at all or not happening yet and so we talked about rate cuts and we talked about etfs etc yep. all those things together to me from a fundamentals perspective add up to what we're seeing in the markets today plus the data you showed on on chain you know whales trimming 
taking profits, all the stuff that's happening there causing us to grind down. Yeah, no, I think that's really well said. Uh, we saw a ton of FUD at the end of last week when that announcement came out about Ethereum's ETFs. Um, likely not going to happen according to multiple sources. Um, and there, there tends to be an overreaction, just like we saw with the Bitcoin ETFs in like November and December. You know, we started to hear that it might be a while. We had Cointelegraph, who we respect a lot. You know, that intern kind of put out that post a little prematurely that they were approved and that caused chaos. Yeah. And then eventually it was approved and we saw kind of a, a sell the, what was it, a buy the rumor, sell the news event where everyone was like, why isn't Bitcoin going up? They just got approved. And then after they stopped um, being euphoric about the ETFs, that's when we saw the all time high in March. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if the crowd stops or or becomes uh, disinterested in the Ethereum ETFs, then they get approved maybe later this year, who knows. Uh, and then we see this this big influx of an altcoin rally uh, toward the end of the year. But that's kind of a rough prediction based on what we know now. Yeah, for sure. It's hard to say. So we'll have to keep doing these videos and see what the data tells us, you know, sort of week in, week out. And, uh, and yeah, Brian, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for sharing all this data with us. And again, you know, folks that are watching, if you want to test out sentiment, links will be in the description below. Not sponsored, but it's a tool that I use. Love having Brian here. So thanks very much. And uh, until next time, cheers. Always a pleasure. Thanks, my friend. Talk to you Talk all soon. soon.